And good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, Lana will be coming down as our acolyte to bring in the light of Christ. So thank you for having me open this on the, on the inner aisle. And uh, in a moment, we're going to begin worship. God bless you. on this beautiful, beautiful spring day. And uh, Pastor Paul is uh, somewhere within the United States right now. And I know that uh, he's having a good time, I think, with one of his daughters, a couple of his daughters. So uh, keep him in your prayers. I'm glad I could be here with you. And pray for me, since I'll be a one-armed paper hanger this morning. Uh, it's always fun to see how it's going to turn out. One thing that we always ask, though, is that um, if you're visiting, oh, we're so glad you're here. Ushers, uh, uh, greeters, if you have a, pa a gift uh, for them, a blip, 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 I believe you do, uh, just put your hand up and we'll be delighted to give that to you and trust you'll come back and worship with us regularly. And by the way, I'm Roger Peterson. I'm uh, the associate here, do some music and a few other things and delighted to do it. One of the things we always uh, Paul always mentions is that if you have prayer requests, there's the blue cards in front of you, or you can simply text him. Uh, text his cell phone. His number is 239-314-8132. That's... How do they do that? <laughs> but that would be the place to call. Uh, or you can call Bonnie, obviously, in the church office. But we're just so glad you're here. 
Uh, obviously, there are probably announcements that I should be making that I'm forgetting, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Uh, if, it's, if it's important, just come up and whisper to me during the service, and we'll make sure it gets done. But let's have a word of prayer right now, shall we? Heavenly Father, thank you again for being able to worship you. Oh, Lord, uh, the challenges going on around the world, particularly in the Middle East now, we just ask that your sovereign, mighty hand would be there just to protect and to guide and to bring a peace that would last until eternity is over, which is forever. So thank us, help us to just worship you well, and in everything we do, give you thanks, Lord, for it's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, let's stand and let's sing. The instruments of
in. You are safe in this place. You're never too broken to be alone. Never too wounded. Never too far gone. Here you'll find Jesus and find your own. You're never too broken to be alone. Come find the perfect love that no one deserves. A peace so sweet it can't be put into words. And grace that's greater than the darkest of sin. Taste and see, take his hand, and let the healing begin. You're never too broken to be alone. Never too wounded, never too far gone. Here you'll find Jesus and find your home. You're never too broken to be alone. We too were wounded and defeated, so we know how you feel. But by the wounds of our Redeemer, we believe, and we were healed. You're never too broken to be alone, never too never too far gone. Here you'll find Jesus and find your home. You're never too broken to be gone. You're never too broken to be Good morning. Good morning. This morning's scripture comes from Matthew 28, verses 11 through 20. While they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests everything that had happened. After the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You must say, His disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story is told among the Jews to this day. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of age. This is the word of the Lord. Would you join me, please, in our unison prayer of confession? Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son to show us the way to eternal life. Thank you for the assurance of our sins forgiven and the promise of your presence with us today, tomorrow, and forever. Thank you 
for your never-ending grace to love us in spite of our failures. Every day is a new gift, filled with the joy of following in your footsteps, knowing you will never lead us astray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Scriptures are very clear that if we say that we have not sinned, we lie. And we just aren't telling the truth. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful. And he promises to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hear the word of God. Believe it and live it. Amen. And if you would, please bow your head with me and let's just take a moment and pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you, we reach out to you because there's so often nowhere else to go and you should always be the first one we go to. Lord, help us to trust you. Help us to believe that no matter how crazy the conflicts in this world can get, you are still our sovereign God and you are the one who promises to never leave us, to never forsake us, the one who will be with us regardless of what happens around us. So we do. We just give our lives to you. We give our worship to you. Lord, we just ask that you would be with our community here, that, that you would be with our county, with our city, with our state. Lord, so many decisions in our capital are made uh, that uh, have huge, huge uh, results to them. And so we pray that you would give wisdom to those who make these decisions, and Lord, that they would be honoring, they would be glorifying to you. Lord, we just ask that uh, for those who are being challenged right now with physical things, Lord, would you just give them hope and give them comfort. Lord, for all those other things that face complications in our lives, at work, financial issues, Lord, some are marital problems, family problems. Lord, all of these things are things that you know about. And we just ask that we will trust you and that we will give them to you and just watch as you work your perfect will in all of our lives. Lord, there are so many that need uh, prayer today, especially for physical challenges. And I would just pray, Lord, for Frank and for Bobby and Louise and for Jim for Jan, for Greg, for Betty, for Elijah, for Adam and Megan and Josh, for Beverly and Mary, Annie, Mike, Pat, Gary, Debbie, Bruce, Jill, for Pastor Scott and Camille, for Victor and Lynn, Cynthia, Cindy, Tom, and Julie. Lord, we continue to pray for Sean and Stephanie and for baby Reed. For Becky and Peter, Lord, for Lexi and Baby, we pray for Jesse and Joe and Wilson and Tim, for Michael and Michelle and Nancy and Linda and Albert and Carol, oh, so many who need your physical touch. For Joanna, Jocelyn, for Janice and for Ralph and for Misa, for Joshua, Matthew, for Joanna and Evan, Lemuel and Pam, for Ron and Sue, for Bill, for Pat, for Richard, Max, for Jack and Max again, for Danny and Joyce, for Lois and Dick, for Patty, Paul, Fred, Betsy, Christopher, Nancy, Tom, and Ardell, for Andrew, Harper, Phyllis, for Tom and Sandy, Brandon, jo uh, Jason, Michael and Karen, for Gary and Stephanie, Steve, Brian, Bonnie, for Hayden, Millie, Mickey, and for Josephine, for Petra. Lord, these are just names to us. Some of them are known, some of them I don't even know. But you know them all perfectly. You've known them before the world began, and you'll know them forever. So I just pray that in this time of their need, that they will search out you, and that they will find you because they seek you with all their heart. Lord, in all these things, we do give you thanks. And just ask that you would bless our worship today. Be with Pastor Paul and just help him and Cheryl. 
help them to just have a wonderful, enriching time with family. And in all these things, we do give you thanks, and we pray as you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, glory forever. Amen and amen. And as our ushers come forward, I just invite you, this is a time when we give back. And we just ask that the tithes and offerings and gifts that you give will be used to honor God, build his kingdom, and build his, his people and his church here right at First Press. God bless you. Above ye 
heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And if you can, remain standing one day, one day, when heaven was filled with his glory. All sorts of things happened right down here, and we're going to sing about them now. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt amongst men, my example is he. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he just Freely forever, one day he's coming, oh glorious day. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain, one day they to die on a tree, suffering anguish despised and rejected bearing our sins my Redeemer is He living He loved me dying He saved me buried He carried my sins far away rising He justified freely Forever, one day he's coming, oh glorious day. One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. ascending my Lord evermore living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he justified freely forever one day he One day the trumpet shall sound for his coming. One day the skies with his glory will shine. Wonderful day my beloved one bringing. Glorious Savior, this Jesus is mine. Living he loved me, dying. Far away, rising he justified, free forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. Please be seated. For those of you who use different strength glasses for different things, make, make sure you don't get them the same color.
the passage of Scripture that I'm going to read for you, we've gone through this before, but there's so, so, so many different truths from Isaiah chapter 6 that uh, just to share a few more of them with you today. But here's what happens in Isaiah 6, one of the most profound moments in the life of this world, especially in the life of God's children, Israel. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings did they cover their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook. The temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I'm unclean, I'm ruined, for I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord God Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with thongs, taken from the altar. And with it he touched my mouth, and he said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for me? And, he, and I said, Here am I. Send me. And he said, Go. Tell the people this. Be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Make the heart of your people calloused. Make their ears dull and close their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. And then I said, For how long, O Lord? And he answered, Until the cities lie ruined and without inhabitant, uh, until the houses are left deserted, fields ruined and ravaged, until the Lord has sent everyone far away. The land is utterly forsaken. And though a tenth remains in the land, it will again be laid waste. But as the terebinth and oak have leave stumps when they are cut down, so the holy seed will be with the stump and be the stump in the land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In Isaiah 6, literally every single verse could be its own message. Such a powerful, powerful chapter. Um, and we'll, we're going to share some things that perhaps you've heard me share before from Isaiah 6, but it's such a beautiful, uh, interesting, awesome uh, chapter in God's Word. Uh, but I want to focus most of all on just the opening words of this chapter in Isaiah 6. Listen to this. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Why did Isaiah start this chapter like that? What was so special about King Uzziah? Uh, and that's certainly a good question. King Uzziah. Israel has had kings ever since God put that nation together. Uh, and in the book of, of Kings, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, in 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, remember those? Those are all about the kings of Israel. Uh, the few of them who were righteous and godly kings, the many of them who were terrible kings. And God's word is absolutely honest and clear about that. No hiding things under the rug. He's uh, the, the writers of God's word under the uh, power of the Holy Spirit. Say it like it is. And it's fascinating. King Uzziah, King Uzziah. His story is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 26. And if you have your Bible, you may want to just turn to that, because I'm going to read a few verses of it to help us understand what's happening in the prophet Isaiah's life. That he would mention King Uzziah. Here's how 2 Chronicles 26 begins. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah who was 16 years old, and made him king in the place of his father, Amaziah. He was the one who rebuilt Elith and restored Judah after Amaziah rested with his fathers. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years. 52 years. Mother's name was all of this, I'm not going to just skip it because we really don't need that. It's the, the point of the story goes on down in verse uh, 16. King Uzziah, righteous king as he begins his reign, godly king uh, throughout his reign until. But after Uzziah became powerful, his pride led him to a downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord, his God, and entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Azariah, the priest with 80 other courageous priests of the Lord, one of whom was probably Isaiah, uh, followed him in. So I, King Uzziah is in the temple now. He's the king, he's not the prophet. King is, is very powerful, but that's not his place to go into the temple and to offer incense. That's a no-no, a huge no-no. So, it says in verse 18, they confronted him and said, it's not right for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord. That's for the priests, uh, the descendants of Aaron, who have been consecrated to burn incense. Leave the sanctuary, for you've been unfaithful, and you will not be honored by the Lord your God. Uzziah, who had a censer in his hand ready to burn incense, became angry while he was raging at the priest in the presence before the Lord. Leprosy broke out on his forehead. And when Azariah, the chief priest, and all the other priests looked at him, they saw that he had leprosy on his forehead, so they hurried him out. Indeed, he himself was eager to leave because the Lord had afflicted him. You don't bring disease into the temple, is what that simply stands for. And so in verse 21, it kind of completes it when he says, And King Uzziah had leprosy until the day he died. He lived in a separate house, leprous, excluded from the temple of the Lord. Jotham, his son, had charge of the palace, governed the people. And the other events of Uzziah's reign from beginning to end are recorded 
uh, by the prophet Isaiah, there we go, uh, rested with his fathers, was buried in a field, burial belonging to the kings. Uh, he had leprosy, and Jotham, his son, succeeded him as king. So what's going on here? Uzziah, good king. 52 years he reigned. That's one of the longest reigns of any king in the whole history of Israel. And yet, like so many kings, not just back then, but leaders today, the longer he served, the more he felt that the power that he had came from himself, not from God. And so, what happened? At the end, God said, enough! Gave him leprosy because he was so, um, just so assured that he could do anything that he wanted to do. This is King Uzziah. That he went into the temple, went where he was never to go, and he knew that. To burn incense, which was the prophet's job, not the king's job. And so when all those prophets came and said, King Uzziah, out, out, out. Don't desecrate the temple. Don't desecrate your own life any more than you already have. He laughed and he raged. And he did what so many of the kings of Israel did. He started his reign filled with the Lord. Filled with the desire to serve the Lord. To follow the Lord. To do the Lord's will. To build things and to do things for his God. But as he got older, he turned to himself. And he had to be judged for it. You know, there's a truth to that. This was written almost 2,700 years ago. About 700 years before Christ. Think of that. 2,700 years ago. And yet, even today, how often it is that those who are faithful followers of the Lord, teaching in their churches, uh, ministering in the way that God had called them to, but as they get older, as they start understanding more and more and more of what it means to be a leader, they become not more of a godly leader, but they become an ungodly leader. And the tragedy is, we hear it so often on the news, another pastor has fallen. Another one has given in to uh, the carnal lust that we have, given in to greed, given in to whatever it may be but given in to things that God did not call him to do. And that was King Uzziah. King Uzziah started out so well, and yet after 52 years of service, he was, he was no longer a godly man. He simply wasn't following God's way. And, oh my goodness, Isaiah called him out on it. Called him out. And then we see that after King Uzziah died, what does, what in the world does Isaiah do? The very temple that King Uzziah had entered wrongfully to burn incense to the Lord wrongfully, that very temple in Jerusalem is the one now that Isaiah enters in, in Isaiah chapter 6. I can't imagine what's going on in his mind as he enters there. He's probably discouraged. Uh, God, why? You ever said that? God, why is this happening? God, why did you allow him to do that? God, why do you allow me to do the things that I do when I know that I shouldn't? And so as Isaiah enters the temple, had to have been filled with grief, with discouragement, wondering where in the world is the nation of Israel, the kingdom of Judah, going to go from now on. And God then did an amazing thing for Isaiah. God showed himself. God shows himself to you and to me as well. Often it's well, not often, pretty much all the time, 
It's not in such an incredible way as he showed himself to Isaiah, but he shows himself to us to remind us that we are not alone, that our service is not forgotten. It'll never be ignored by our Lord. And so that's what happened with Isaiah. It says he entered the temple, and lo and behold, he saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted. The train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs with wings, and it talks about how those wings were used. And they were crying to one another a song that we love to sing here. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. In your mind, don't have to sing it out loud, but just think of the song. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning, our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 there is none beside Thee which word and art and evermore shall be. And so we get to sing the song that the seraphs gave to Isaiah so many centuries ago. Hmm. They gave him more than a song though, didn't they? As Isaiah is there in the temple, overwhelmed by the presence of the Lord in so many glorious ways. It says that he bowed himself. He literally cringed is probably the way that the original would have said it as he realized how unworthy he was. He had no right being in God's presence. Uh, a God who could do the things that he was doing there uh, in the temple. But God then sent his uh, messengers, the sheriffs, to him. They brought a live coal. You ever barbecued with live coals? Sure. Nice and glowing red. One thing you don't do. Um, often, you get a coal. What happened? Gary's looking at me here. You get a coal that falls out of the pile. So you got to do something with that coal. It's not doing any good over there at the corner of the grill. So you got to brush it back in. But you can't find anything to brush it in with. So you do what you know you shouldn't do. You take your hand, you try and make it a little wet so it won't hurt as much, and you flick it. Try and get that coal back in there. And it's hot! That's the image that I see of the seraph as he brings this live, living coal to the prophet Isaiah and says, take this. And he touches Isaiah's lips with it. And he says, God has cleansed your lips. He's cleansed your heart. All the things that you are so worried about and discouraged about were done by others. And they shall see their reward. But you don't have to take it on yourself. You are cleansed. And God has a job for you, Isaiah. It's an important job. And after seeing all this, what can Isaiah do except to say, of course, anything. Here I am. Send me. And then he hears what his assignment is when the Lord begins it by saying, the people of God will are ever hearing but never understanding. Uh, they're seeing but they're not perceiving. Make the heart of the people callous. And I can almost see Isaiah in his mind going, what did I just say? Here am I, send me. Lord, you want me to deliver that message? It's more like I'm now saying, here am I, send me? He didn't want to do it. And none of us want, would want an assignment like that from God. Nobody likes sharing bad news, especially when we have to share it with people that we know people that we love, that the way that they're living, the goals that they have, how they're doing the thing called life is not God's way. And that's what Isaiah had to tell, to, um, was, was the Lord was saying to Isaiah, the people of God have strayed so far because uh, the king has led them astray. 
The king has not guided them, and people being people will do what their leaders do. And so what I think my prayer is of everything for this passage is that we would understand God wants us to follow him, not allow ourselves to just um, go, go the way of leaders who are not following the Lord, uh, not believe that what they're saying is right, and therefore because they're our leader, we've got to go ahead and do that. No, God is our leader. The Lord God Almighty, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. He's the one that we must follow. My goodness. I've, I've decided we're going to end the service just a little bit different. And Pastor Paul, if you're listening, I'm not going to scare you, I promise. <laughs> We've had something happen in our world that is very, very scary. For 2,700 years and longer, the Middle East has been in turmoil. Israel has been fighting others. Other nations have been fighting amongst themselves. No matter how it seems like it's all been straightened out, before you know it, another war breaks out there, just like it has done uh, in the Middle East right now. And we need to pray about that. I'm not asking us to pray that any one nation would be, you know, the one that receives all of God's glory, and the other ones are confounded and removed. I'm simply asking that we would pray that God's will, His perfect will, would be done there in that turmoil. Because that turmoil will spread from the Middle East around the world if it doesn't get stopped and doesn't get quenched. And so I've asked for two of our elders to come. Pat, would you come? And Keith, just to close in a brief word of prayer, we're going to sing a song then. But I want to end this message reminding ourselves that... Um, Pastor Paul and I, we don't have the final words in these things, but you, you have them with us. God speaks to you and through you, just as he does with us. And I don't really care. Pat, you're going to go first? I appreciate that. Would you pray? Thank you. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are indeed holy, holy, holy. You are all-knowing and wonderful. You are our wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And Lord, we praise you and we thank you. We ask you now to open the hearts and the minds of the Israelite people that they may see Jesus, that they may see him in your word. Protect your people, Lord, and restore their hope. Give them wisdom and discernment and keep them in your word. Lord, grant them insight in the scriptures and remind them of your faithfulness. Heavenly Father, we trust in your provision that your people will know that you are good and true to your word and promises. Let them all feel your presence and in your hand in all that is happening in Israel. Save your people, Lord, as Israel is being attacked. Keep them strong, confident, knowing that you are sovereign and in control. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Let's continue in prayer. Our Father, we recognize you as the creator of all that is and all that has ever been. And you created your people, Israel, to be your peculiar, your certain people throughout all the ages. They were then, they were during the reign of King Uzziah, they are now. And so God, we, um, we pray for them. And we recognize that you have come as Messiah. You came first as Messiah to your people, Israel. And then through the marvelous miracle of adoption, you have accepted us, we Gentiles, as your adopted daughters and sons. Thank you, thank you so much, God, for your inclusive love. Father, we know that there are many 
uh, who are in Israel and Palestine throughout the Mideast who worship you as Savior, who accept you, who know that their salvation is only through Jesus Christ. And so, God, we pray your protection over the Israelites, over the nation of Israel, over all of your people. And God, there are so many millions yet, I believe, to come to you. We pray your protection for them as well. And guide their hearts, guide their spirits. I pray, God, that um, though so many things that are meant for evil, you turn to good and you turn to blessing. And I pray through this broader Mideast turmoil and war that you will turn many to you. Father, bless us. Help us to be messengers of Christ to all people. Father, we pray for Jews who are feeling threatened and are indeed threatened throughout the world and in our own nation. I pray, God, that you will help us as your, as your saved children to be messengers of peace and messengers of rescue. We thank you, God, that you are alive within us and without your Holy Spirit, we are helpless and nothing. But you are here. You are present. You are love. And we are dependent upon you entirely. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you. Would you stand, please? The scriptures are not simply to be read and memorized and have a beautiful Bible laying on a counter table somewhere. They're to be followed. And so let's sing this beautiful, simple song. I have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. I still will follow, no turning back, no turning back. Lord, we give our lives afresh and anew to you this day. Lord, use us. Help us to not ask, say that I'm here, Lord, and I'll follow you. Say it with a question mark. Help us to say it with an exclamation point. We will follow you. We love you, Lord. We ask you to guide us. We ask you to protect this world in the only way that you know how and that you can, and that's through your power and through your glory. Lord, we pray all of this in your glorious, matchless name. Amen.